Welcome to the Accounting Class. In this session, we give you an introduction to financial accounting. We are asking the questions, what is accounting? What do accountants do? So let's take the first of these questions, what is accounting? Whenever you buy or sell something, you have taken part in a transaction, as has the person with whom you did business. So if you have been busy buying and selling at garage sales, then you have carried out many transactions. When you pay property taxes, or when you have made a monthly payment for a mortgage, then you have participated in a transaction. If you have had to borrow money in order to study, then you have taken part in a transaction. Whenever goods or services are exchanged for money, or even for other goods and services, a transaction takes place. In times past, the exchange may have been along the lines of giving your neighbour eggs for a month in return for a nice plump turkey at Thanksgiving. There are still areas where such exchange is a part of everyday life and it is often called bartering. Bartering can also mean haggling over the price of goods at a market or in a car showroom. We are still talking about transactions. What accounting has to do is to devise a means of recording these transactions. To do this, a standard is required. For many years, the standard has been to record in terms of monetary value. In the US, transactions are recorded in dollar amounts. In Germany, they are recorded in euros, and in the United Kingdom, in sterling. Having a standard is a start. Years ago, Italian bankers were aware that each transaction could have two effects on each party. The moneylenders who feature in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice realised this. When Shylock loaned money, he would record two things. The amount of money that his cash account had decreased by, the amount of money that was owed to him by a debtor. When you buy that new pickup off the lot, you can record two effects. The amount of money that you have paid from your bank account, the value of the pickup, an asset, that you have acquired. Recording in this way, entering the two effects of a transaction, is known as double entry accounting. Double entry accounting has been the standard used in accounting for several centuries. So I guess you could say, well, it seems to work. So accounting involves recording transactions. The people who do the recording are usually referred to as bookkeepers. The term is used because many people used to keep their records in books that they referred to as ledgers. The term arose in England because the books were kept on ledgers. We now use the word shelves. Even though we now have accounting software, the terms have survived, and we still refer to the general ledger, the sales ledger, and the purchase ledger. Records on their own tell us very little about what is happening. The records are a collection of financial information. Accountants are those people who make use of this financial information. They make use of it in a number of ways. They produce reports that are of use to owners, investors and to the Inland Revenue for tax reporting. These accountants are usually called financial accountants. The first part of the course is about financial accounting. Financial information can be used to help plan for the future, to determine selling prices, to prepare budgets. The accountants who use financial information in this way are called managerial accountants. Let us focus first on the financial reporting part of accounting. Rachel owns a small florist business which she started at the beginning of the year. It is now December and she is starting to look at her accounts. She has records of how much she has received from sales, how much she paid for her goods, and of the costs involved in running her shop. 
She totals the sales and then she subtracts from this the amount she paid for the flowers she sold. In accounting terms, we say that she has calculated the gross profit. Gross profit is equal to sales less cost of goods sold. She now subtracts from this amount all the other expenses that she has paid, such as lighting, water, paying an assistant and advertising. In accounting terms, we say that she has calculated her net income. Net income is equal to gross profit less operating expenses. Setting out these figures is called producing an income statement. An income statement is an important financial report. Rachel now has a figure for the money that she has made from her trading activity over the past year. She wants to determine how well she has done. She invested money into her business at the start of the year. This money is often called capital for a business with one owner. It is also known as equity in accounting terms. During the year, she has also taken some money from the business. This she needed for her personal use. We do not call this money a wage or a salary. It is called a withdrawal. Rachel knows that she started with the figure that she invested. She has added to this figure with the net income that she has made. She has reduced the amount by the withdrawals that she has made. Using this information, Rachel takes her starting figure for equity, adds the net income, then subtracts the withdrawals. The figure she now has represents the equity at the end of the year. Using financial information in this way produces a report that we refer to as the Statement of Owner's Equity. She now asks, what is my business worth? She starts with a very simple idea. If I add up the value of everything that I own, and then subtract everything that the business owes, this should give me a figure for what the business is worth. She starts by listing the value of those things the business has, the premises that were bought, the cash at the bank, the equipment, and some money that is owed the business by a customer. She totals this list, which she labels as assets. She now lists what is owed, some money for a small loan, and an amount for supplies that she still has to pay for. She totals this list, which she labels as liabilities. Subtracting the liabilities from the assets, she reaches a new figure. To her surprise, it is equal to the figure that she worked out for her statement of owner's equity. Rachel has discovered the accounting equation. Assets, less liabilities, equal equity. You will sometimes see this written another way. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. It is still the same accounting equation. The accounting equation must balance when the calculations are made. Setting out the assets, then setting out the liabilities and statement of owner's equity is called a balance sheet. It is prepared at the end of the trading year, but it can be prepared more frequently. A large corporation would not normally wait until the end of the year before producing financial reports. Finally, Rachel wants to look at her position in terms of cash. She looks at all the transactions that have taken place. At the start of the year, when she began her business, there was no cash. 
She started by placing a sum of money in the bank account for the business. She has also withdrawn money during the year. These represent the financing activities of the business. She can see that she has received cash from sales and paid out cash for supplies and other expenses. These are the cash flows from the operating activities of the business. She then looks at the money she paid for the assets of the business. This includes the purchase of premises and the equipment that she uses. These represent investment in the business. Rachel shows each group separately, the operating activities, the financing activities and the investing activities. She lists the amount that flowed into the business for each activity and the amount of cash that flowed out of the business for each activity. By adding the inflows of cash and subtracting the outflows of cash, she reaches a position that shows the cash at the end of the period. Rachel has produced a statement known as the cash flow statement. Before she started trading, Rachel had a good idea of how much she intended to spend and what she would spend the money on. She also worked out how much she expected to receive. She set out these figures to show what she expected on a month-by-month -month basis. At the end of each month, she compared these figures with the actual figures from her trading. Rachel had produced a budget and compared her performance with the budget. She finishes her year by preparing another budget for next year, including using all the information she now has to determine whether she is selling the flowers at the best price to maximise her income. All the activities that Rachel has carried out are those of accounting. Accountants carry out the same activities, but usually for larger businesses, and they may specialise in just one particular part of the activities. I hope this gives you a brief idea of what accounting is about and of what accountants do. This ends our first session in accounting.